this is the address and it's called hit the mute button hit the mute button that's the title of this dress not something to do right now or at least please wait until i've finished brothers and sisters when it comes to a zoom bible study isn't the mute button a fantastic invention try it and you'll never go back there's another fantastic invention called google animals where you can see real 3D actual animals in your own home. Lions and tigers in your own living room. Today, I'm going to talk about sheep, wolves and ducks. So please have these images ready in your minds, if not on Google Animals. From John chapter 10, verse 12. The wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. The wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. It follows our earlier reading on the same theme of the sheep, the good shepherd, the gatekeeper. We all know it well. Throughout the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New, we often get a picture of the people as sheep. When danger comes, either the hired hand can't be trusted and runs away, or the good shepherd is taken away. Whichever disaster happens, the result is the same. The sheep are scattered to be picked off individually by the wolf like sitting ducks, if that's not too many mixed up images of animals and ducks. But with the internet, we could probably put them all in our living rooms to fight it out. And it always looks as if the attack and scattering is the end of everything. The world is turned upside down, the wolf is in charge. That's what happened the night Jesus was arrested in the garden. The disciples disappeared, melted away like terrified sheep. Even Peter, who's sworn absolutely, I'll stay with you, Lord, whatever, has a complete brainstorm and forgets he ever knew anyone called Jesus from Galilee. But we know the end of the story. We know that out of that scattering, out of Easter, those disoriented, scared, rather hopeless, useless disciples became strong, discovered community, discovered how to lean on and support each other, worked out how to communicate in new ways with others outside their group. We know the early church rose up from those scattered sheep. The word of God is constantly speaking to us in new ways as our lives change. Those words about being scattered sheep, well, they literally apply to us today in a way we couldn't have imagined a few weeks ago. This Sunday, our congregations are scattered. Our churches are locked. We're not able to share the communion table or the right hand of fellowship, the blessing and the peace together. In the early days of lockdown, there was lots to do, problems to solve, ambitious homes, uh, plans for home or garden work, learning new skills, accessing online worship or Bible study, setting up internet meetings. I imagine the disciples going through a similar time of excitement and new activity as they met Jesus, their friend and teacher, in new ways after Easter. The disciples could make sense of the past could even try to understand the resurrection, but they had a real problem with what were they supposed to be doing right now? We are here in limbo, stuck in these in-between days with the disciples. Eventually, like us, they returned as far as possible to familiar routines. They went fishing. They couldn't know the upheaval that God had planned for them at Pentecost because they didn't have a timetable to work to. They didn't know the countdown to the date the Holy Spirit would come. All they had was their promise from Jesus, I will be with you always, even to the end of time. How do we stop the wolf from invading our homes? Standing right by the sofa during this anxious time, when the usual rules and timetable have been torn up, here's a suggestion. Hit the mute button. Mute too much worry, anxiety, getting angry with people, rumours and false news reports. 
and especially mute thinking that right now I know God's purpose for ourselves, our church, our congregation. We will later, when we look back, be able, like Moses, to see where God has passed by, to make sense of it all. But for now, we're with the disciples, just waiting. But while we're waiting, each one of us has said, while I can't see God's purpose, I know the end of the Easter story because I've heard the voice of Jesus, the true shepherd, the voice I know calling me. Because I've chosen to follow him, I know I'm not alone. And because I've chosen Christian hope, the wolf has no place in my home. Each one of us, by switching on and joining in today, is strengthening and supporting every other member. I thank God for that, that by our life-affirming choices, by our common hope, we're all worshipping together today. Brothers and sisters, hit the mute button on fear of the future, turn up the volume on Christian hope and see the wolf disappear. Stay well and the Lord watch between me and you when we're absent one from another. Amen.